good evening everyone uh, we're going to start with a brief uh, uh, online on how uh, we uh, manage these patients with metastatic spine tumors uh, it's it's one of the fields which is constantly getting upgraded all around the world because there are so many new things coming up and this is one field where everywhere pan world everyone is into research to uh, eventually end up uh, giving the best results. Classically, we know that spine tumor surgeries are all big surgeries, but everybody is now focusing very hard to make all these big surgeries small. So the things that have changed is now it's a multidisciplinary approach. It's not like an oncosurgeon sending a patient across to us or an oncologist telling us to do the surgery. Uh, it's a combined decision between the oncospine surgeon, the oncophysicians, the oncosurgeons, radiologist, and the radiation oncologist. All these decisions are taken uh, in a multidisciplinary meeting where, uh, where following points are discussed. You come to a diagnosis, you stage the patient, then you make a plan. If you want to curate, uh, you want to do a curative surgery or a palliative surgery, always think about the life expectancy of the patients and yes the fitness is also important based on this you decide if the patient has to undergo surgery chemotherapy or radiation uh, therapy here there is something different here the spine surgeons have to take that extra leap and learn a little bit about oncology and also a little bit about uh, radiation therapy so the first step in the treatment is establishing a diagnosis there are so many different ways of establishing a diagnosis but it is mandatory without and without a diagnosis please don't treat any patients of spine tumors you have so many different ways of doing it you can do a fnac you can do a ct guided biopsy you can do a cm guided biopsy endoscopic approaches are available but at the end of the day you need to have a tissue and once you have the tissue you need to establish what you're dealing with the second plan is to establish uh, the second step is to establish how you're going to treat the patient so here there are several scoring systems which are available uh, which have been validated which gives you a brief idea about how you want to approach the uh, patient Tokoashi scoring system is one of that which takes into account a lot of things like the general condition of the patient, how many meta metastases are there within the vertebra and outside, uh, what is the primary site of the tumor and what is the neurological grade and it gives us a brief idea about how aggressive we want to do, uh, uh, you know, you want to treat these patients. Uh, with this, you kind of identify the favorable tumor types and the non-favorable tumor types. Now, th this is basically as a surgeon's perspective. So these favorable tumor types are those isolated oligometastases in a patient who has a long expe life expectancy and a young fit patient. There you would want to uh, go hard, you want to do an excisional surgery, you want to give them the best possible local uh, cure. Uh, Next thing is you have to see if the patient is fit to undergo procedures. And there are again uh, scoring systems available like ECOG and Karnofsky scoring which tells us if the patient is really fit to undergo a big procedure. Once you know that the patient is fit, then you should actually think that just because we are surgeons and we can do the surgery, should we actually do the surgery? Therein you have got other scoring systems like Tomita scoring system which will give us a brief idea about how to do the surgery. You want to go a wide marginal excision or do you want to just do a uh, intralesional surgery and uh, just or just do a decompression surgery. Once all of that is set and things are in our favor and you know that you are able to remove the tumor, you have to actually see technically is it feasible and there's where the oblock spondylectomy comes. Now oblock spondylectomy is a big surgery and there is no ways that you can do it small. So you have to identify those patients who are the ideal candidate for oblock spondylectomy and the idea is that you remove the tumorous part from the spine without really getting into the tumor. Uh, so the steps are you have to, uh, uh, you know, you have to separate out the elements and slowly you have to deliver the tumorous part out of the uh, spine without really getting into the tumor. It's a very technically challenging uh, surgery and a discussion of this itself will take a half an hour, 45 minutes thing. So we are not going to get too much in detail, but these are few cases where you have, you know, isolated tumor within the body uh, with a part of the, the elements preserved so that you technically can uh, remove the uh, tumor without really getting into the tumor. And, uh, and gradually what you see is that the entire spinal column at some stage is detached and it's reconstructed from the front and the back. And then you have a specimen where uh, the entire body has been removed. What happens is these surgeries are very high-end surgeries and although they look very fancy and you know, you, you want to feel that uh, you're doing a very good job, almost always there are two problems that happen. By the time these patients actually come to you, uh, the tumor is already pressing on the cord. So they are not truly oblock spondylectomies. The other thing is all over the world there are 
more than 20 to 30 percent complications associated with the surgery. So you should have a big heart, you should have a big tummy and you should really be trained to do these surgeries at centers where you're doing it. Because we have had so many problems. It is an established procedure. You have got several publications internationally and nationally which tells us the role of oblog spondylectomy in managing uh, primary and even metastatic spinal tumors. Uh, the thing is that this is a scenario almost always when it actually presents to us. There's these tumors are not contained and uh, you are, and you technically fall beyond the parameters of oblog spondylectomy. Then what do you do for these cases? Well, in these patients also, since they are favorable, they, are, they have a long life expectancy and they are fit patients, you want to think of the best possible way to get a good local tumor control. And here is where you start thinking about doing a gross total excision followed by different types of adjuvant treatments. Now this could be open, it could be mini open, it could be tubular, and it could be even endoscopic. Um, uh, like for example, in this patient, where uh, initially these pa this patient was planned for an oblog spondylectomy of L4, but by the time the patient actually presented to us, it was already a metastatic tumor and had a pathological fracture in the hip. And we then decided that we'll just do a gross total excision and give them and then switch to a neoadjuvant treatment. Uh, there are minimally invasive treatment options available for these type of surgeries. And I'm not going too much in detail because we have got different uh, panel, uh, different faculty who's going to talk on every aspect of this. Uh, let's say if you are, there is another completely different approach of dealing with these type of tumors and that is now available because radiation therapy has actually gone very high. So classically we have always been taught that you have got uh, rad radiation resistant tumors and radiosensitive tumors. But with the era of SBRT and uh, carbon ion, proton beam, uh, there is nothing which is now radio resistant. You just have to select and plan which type of surgery you want, which type of radiation therapy you want to do for these patients. So there's something called as clearance surgery where you just remove the tumor off from the cord. And once that is done, you burn out that tumor with high dose radiation. And we have Dr. Eric Massicot who's going to talk on these type of uh, procedures. Uh, all of this is now possible because you've got newer gadgets to play with. You've got, uh, you've got minimally invasive spine techniques. You've got uh, navigation methods. You've got robotics. Uh, and with this, you're able to do all these new, new things. And that's why the field of spine tumors is really growing at a rapid rate. Uh, what to do for the tumors which are not favorable? Not favorable tumors are basically tumors which are studded all across the spine. Uh, you have an old patient who's not fit or a uh, paraplegic patient where you know that you don't have enough time uh, as far as the life expectancy of this patient is concerned to give them a good result. There you want to think about making their life comfortable. And then you have got so many other alternatives that we have over here, like aggressive intralesional excision, you do palliative debulking, think about conventional radiotherapy, think about newer model um, uh, modalities of radiation treatment like uh, clearance surgery followed by SBRT. Think about uh, vertebroplasty, percutaneous fixation. So basically the idea is that you want to make the remaining part of the patient's life as comfortable and as functional as possible. Like this patient with metastatic spine tumor did not have a good life expectancy, just did a vertebroplasty and had comfortable few months of their life. Then you've got multiple spine meds which you can deal with vertebroplasty. Him, uh, this, uh, then you have got sacroplasties, uh, to, you know, for those sacral fractures where you can uh, make them comfortable uh, and uh, multiple level stabilization and vertebroplasties. So these are different types of uh, treatments which have been evolved over the past 15 to 20 years. Uh, and we are going to have now panelists from all across talking about the different, uh, different, uh, uh, different modalities that we are available. We first have Dr. Eric Massicot from Canada, and he is going to talk on separation surgery in spinal metastasis. So if you if he can have his video loaded on. And we'll probably, because we are really running short of time, what we are going to do is we are going to finish the entire symposium. And at the end, if you have got any questions coming up, we'll open it up for discussion. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.